celebrates 75 years. Good evening, I'm Glenn Mills. And I'm Emily Flores. We thank you for joining us here on this Tuesday. We do begin at the state capitol where a number of controversial bills governing transgender kids are up for consideration. People protesting this afternoon ahead of the House Health and Human Services Committee meeting where they are discussing banning gender affirming care for minors. ABC4's Annika Johns joining us live from Utah's Capitol Hill with the very latest. Annika. That's right, Glenn. Senate Bill 16 has already passed through the Senate, but House Bill 132 is up for consideration for the first time today. Supporters of the bill say that it, uh, it allows time for research and studies on transgender youth. Both bills would prohibit sex transitioning procedures for those under 18. Uh, Representative Schiff's bill would end all uh, hormones and um, uh, puberty blockers and surgeries for transgender minors. But those who attended a rally held outside the Capitol organized by ACLU Utah say these bills are a target on transgender youth. The, this hit care um, and many instances actually would still be accessible if for use when not performed on someone who is transgender. The committee is also considering SB 100, which would require schools to tell parents if their child requires to be known by a different name or pronoun. The committee meeting is still ongoing, but we have been told that House Bill 132 has failed to pass. We'll continue to update you on the meeting as it continues. Reporting live from the Utah State Capitol, Annika Johns, ABC4 News. Annika, thank you. Newly arrived refugees opening proceedings on Utah's House floor today. Two Ukrainian refugees sharing some words of thanks before leading lawmakers in the Pledge of Allegiance. Take a listen to this. We ask you to bless the leaders in the House representatives. They, they may have the Holy Spirit with them and they may find unity in the, this time of division. This gesture from the Utah legislature comes ahead of a major announcement expected from the White House tomorrow. U.S. officials sharing news with the Associated Press that the Biden administration is planning to reverse a previous decision and send tanks to Ukraine. It would make U.S. the second country after Germany to send ta uh, tanks to the war-torn country. That official announcement, again, is expected tomorrow. Been a busy winter for snowplow drivers, and today the Utah legislature honoring them for all that hard work. <laughs> Representative Ashley Matthews from Kearns saying, these are the hands that literally and figuratively keep Utah moving. So far this winter, they have plowed 1.8 million miles and have spent nearly 100,000 uh, 100, hours in the truck. We thank them, thank them, thank them for Seriously, all of their it has work. It's been a busy winter. No yes, doubt. it has. We've lived, uh, we've lived in Idaho for a little bit, and we came back to Utah, and we just thought, man, they really know how to plow the roads. <laughs> they get it done. Yes, yes they, they do. do. They're good with their job, so we thank them for that. And then we're going to have a little bit more to plow uh, over the weekend for sure. We've got a few weeks' systems we're going to walk you through that are going to bring just some light snow showers. Uh, the cold temperatures, though, certainly out there. Northerly flow bringing in some of the clouds across northern Utah. We've had a few uh, flurries across the Wasatch Front, a dusting of snow over some of the higher terrain. A little bit more moisture moving in tonight along a weak disturbance could generate a few more uh, snow showers, even for the valleys. A nice dusting out uh, overnight could slick up some of the roadways. Uh, but this northerly flow isn't going anywhere. We have high pressure off to the north and west of us, a large trough across much of the uh, central part of the U.S., and we're kind of stuck in the middle of it. Storm tracker quiet. There were a few light snow showers, look like popping up in portions of the Tooele Valley. We've had, again, a little bit of light snow shower activity out there today. Really not much though. Some of it's been, or most of it, excuse me, has been over the Wasatch Range and uh, even points further east. The Uintas have seen just a little bit of light snow shower activity. Clouds certainly going to stay around overnight. Again, here comes this week disturbance as we put future cast into motion. Uh, not expecting much out of this system that does move through, but into tomorrow morning, some of the central mountains could see some light snow showers as you head out into Wednesday morning. And we'll continue to see that northerly flow for tomorrow. So plan on similar temperatures tomorrow that we've seen today. Highs just right near freezing. So we're staying right at around 30, 31 degrees into the 20s though. In fact, overnight we're going to be in the low 20s as we get into Wednesday morning. So bitter cold out there once again. Emily.
All right, we thank you, Nate. Well, tonight out of Iron County, new details on the apparent murder-suicide in Enoch that left eight family members dead. On January 4th, Enoch City Police responded to a welfare check on Tasha Haight. They say her husband, Michael Haight, was also reported missing at the time. While investigating records show neighbors entered the family's home where they found the couple, their five kids, and Tasha's mother all shot and killed. During a search of the family's home and cars, police say they did find a gun, bullets, several phones, and tablets. Police say they believe Michael shot and killed his family before turning the gun on himself. And a Hillcrest High student is in police custody after being found with a gun by a school resource officer. According to police, the resource officer had requested the student to come and talk to him yesterday. The student refused, which resulted in a small scuffle in the hallway. The gun was then found on the student's waist side. The student never threatened anybody with the gun and was taken to juvenile detention. We have not seen anything that ever indicates that this, the school is a, a threat. Um, we had, we're assuming that he was trying to get away from the officer because he didn't want the officer to find that weapon. Now the teens facing charges of possession of a firearm by a restricted person and possession of a firearm in a school. Taylorsville police looking for an aggravated rape suspect and they're asking for your help finding him. They say 43 year old Christopher Browning you see here attacked a woman in her home on January 18th. Police believe Browning is dangerous and even possibly armed. He was released from prison last year after 24 years behind bars for rape and burglary. Police say Browning and the victim did know each other but were not in a relationship. If you see him or know where he is, contact Taylorsville Police. We have the number for you right there at the bottom of the screen. And Ephraim City Police and Snow College officers are investigating a death at an off-campus student house. Now, this happened early this morning. Information still limited at this hour, but please do tell us the person who died is not a student but was an employee with the college. Officers do not suspect foul play and believe there is no danger to Snow College students or the community there. New details tonight about a drug bust involving millions of dollars in cash and real estate here in Utah. Salt Lake City Police say they got a report of suspicious shipments at mail facilities all across the country that led them right back here. That triggered an investigation in 2020 and led to multiple search warrants and 25 arrests. The Department of Homeland Security saying they recovered 40 kilograms of bath salts, more than $6 million in real estate, four guns, and more than $2 million in cash. This cooperation has ultimately led to the dismantlement of several of these large groups. HSI remains focused on our shared quest to identify and destroy transnational criminal organizations that attempt to distribute these dangerous con this dangerous contraband across our borders. According to drug enforcement specialists, bath salts are mainly produced in East Asia and have effects similar to methamphetamines. It's estimated that a kilogram has a street value of $400,000. Coming up, how the Utah Jazz is helping to give people a fresh start tonight at 6. Thank you, Kayla. And still ahead, classified documents found at former Vice President Mike Pence's home. What conflicting information he told ABC in November. All right, and we have a shot of Southern Utah University in Cedar City. Beautiful end of the day. We've got blue skies out there. Not going to last forever, though. We do have some changes brewing for the Beehive State. We'll talk about those coming up after the break. All right.